Hello there, and welcome to the program that takes you on a ride in 25 minutes to seek out innovation and creativity that are unique to Africa. This week, we focus on how telemedicine is transforming the healthcare industry and making it easier for patients to receive medical care. And I chat with Douglas Kenderson, CEO of Seller on Africa's Creator Economy. We'll give you more in a moment. This is Tetrides, and I am Olayemi Odunuga. The internet, like the steam engine, is a technological breakthrough that changed the world. Telemedicine is fast becoming an effective remedy for medical woes, especially for Nigerians dissatisfied by the quality of healthcare in the country. Through telehealth platforms, patients now have access to medical services from the comfort of their homes. And according to the World Health Organization, it provides a cost-effective approach to delivering high-quality care and reducing overall morbidity and mortality. A few years ago, the regular sites at hospitals and clinics entailed congestions and long waiting hours to seek medical care from health professionals. But with the evolution of the healthcare industry and the advent of telemedicine, there has been a change to how patients access quality healthcare services. Hello, doctor. Doctor, I'm not feeling fine at all. Telemedicine has brought a new reality by providing a convenient way to receive medical support and bridge the gap between doctors and patients. Telemedicine simply means the use of modern day technology to provide clinical care to patients remotely. And it has been proven to be a very cost effective and time efficient solution uh, in addressing the healthcare deficit across the globe. The technology itself is not new, it's been in existence for decades, but the adoption has been quite slow until COVID. Telemedicine has been around for a while in many countries, but not so many accepted it until recently. Limited hospital visits in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic facilitated its adoption as health workers were able to diagnose patients remotely via video and app-based visits. Before the pandemic, uh, a lot of people were quite skeptical about the use of telemedicine, especially uh, professional bodies and a lot of uh, older uh, physicians and healthcare professionals. However, the time is kind of changing which regards the fact that people are coming to see that most of the clinic visits that we kind of go for endlessly can be cut out by using telemedicine. So if it is itchy, we give something for the itchiness. The ketoconazole shampoo is not treating it as a fungal infection. Although telemedical platforms are siblings to traditional healthcare systems, there are barriers to its implementation. Across Africa, there's still no blueprint for the adoption of telemedicine, and that leaves a lot of loophole that needs to be urgently addressed. We need to have policies and guidelines that will guide, for instance, the licensing of the doctors, uh, their qualification, are they suitably qualified? You want to make sure that the doctors have the appropriate licensing and that they're currently in, in good standing with their regulators, um, wherever they are practicing. You also want to make sure that the handling of the patient's medical record it follows international guidelines and that they are not being compromised. So those are some of the things um, that need uh, urgent attention. Telehealth has its limitations, but the technology can play a significant role in easing up the strain on the healthcare system. Even though telemedicine is a game changer in providing medical consultation, it remains an alternative and not a replacement of the traditional healthcare systems. It's one of the major things is that it serves to help us reduce costs. Uh, beyond the cost savings, we, we also see that it would, would help reduce the number of hospital visits, we, uh, keeping the spaces in hospital for people that really need it, uh, reducing the waiting times for, for other people. And then if we're looking at community-based care, for example, most um, care settings have a good connection between the hospital and the community such that someone who is diabetic, for example, can be receiving care in a particular hospital, have a consultant based in the hospital, but also have a care team in the community. And those two people, in terms of the consultant and the care team in the community, 
um, would be able to liaise with video conferencing with the patients from time to time to help manage their conditions. It reduces the time to diagnosis and treatment, so that means that there's less likelihood of a complication as a result of delayed presentation. So now patients can access a doctor quicker, they can, uh, they can get their medications delivered to their houses, they can get their, their diagnostic tests like blood tests or even a swab taken from their homes and, uh, and then that reduces the hospital drop-in and the congestion that you have in the secondary and the tertiary centres. Regardless of their geographical location, patients can access quality healthcare services from the comfort of their homes through telehealth, which is another way to show how much technology is revolutionising sectors in the world. Kutonu resident Aruna Damasi ignites his new electronic motorbike as he slides silently among the throbbing column of motorcycles swarming through rush hour traffic in Benes capital. The 40-year-old informal trader is the proud new owner of an electric two-wheeler made by India-based company M Auto, which launched bikes in Bene and Togo this year. It's an ecological motorcycle, which means it doesn't pollute, it doesn't have smoke. So compared to a petrol motorcycle, you have to agree with me that I am helping in the protection of my environment. When the battery runs low, drivers do not have to stop and recharge, but simply replace it at one of M Auto's 14 swapping stations in Kutanu for 1,000 CFA francs. Emmanuel Ahuendo owns the bigger M Auto model called the Commando. He uses it for deliveries and other jobs. For him and the manufacturers, driving an electric motorcycle is first of all an economical choice. Not only it pollutes the environment, not only do the regular ones pollute the environment, there are so many paths to change. Every week, every weekend, they have to change the oil. There are small paths to change very frequently, like the chain, and you even have to clean the carburetor sometimes. So this new motorcycle I find to be more economical. I only have to change the battery and it starts. We believe in the fact that the electric argument alone is not enough. People have to find an economic benefit. And once they've found that, the ecological arguments will be added. And today, we have customers from all social categories. We have a lot of women who ride our motorcycles. And it's a real pleasure. Et donc aujourd'hui, on a des clients dans toutes les catégories. Mobi drivers are concerned about having to plan routes around battery points rather than filling up from contraband petrol vendors found on almost every street corner. M Auto also has to look into producing longer lasting batteries, as typically their scooters run out of power after between 70 and 120 kilometers, according to a swapping station employee. Yet, M Auto has sold over 2,000 e mopeds since May and aims to make more than 15,000 on East and West African roads by year end. Equipped with spectral imaging and artificial intelligence, this drone has the ability to scan massive agricultural lands and specify issues, facilitate resolutions for farmers, and save precious crop. Co-founder of RoboCare startup, Imin Hebri, says that her algorithms can predict the illness of a tree and specify over-irrigated or under-irrigated plants, among others. RoboCare gives solutions to the farmer using modern technologies and artificial intelligence by photographing all plants using the drone that has a spectral camera this camera is unique, like MRI or X-rays. We scan all the plants and then give the farmer the condition of the vegetation cover on his whole land. The profit margin of farmer today is in constant decline from year to year. 
Today, when you do not monitor the fertilization or irrigation process, do not carry out analysis and do not follow up on your land, you do not last for long. Today, agriculture is no longer traditional. With the cost increasing day by day, you must calculate everything. RoboCare was founded in 2020. The startup offers a solution for the rapid spread of diseases in greenhouse plants, the massive use of pesticides, and can reduce water used for irrigation. Forecast in Tunisia points to longer droughts, a reduction in water resources, and an increased number of fires over the next decade. Farmers, in addition to their knowledge and experience with the land and soil, can use modern technologies like RoboCare to overcome the problems of climate change and make better use of natural resources. Agriculture accounts for 80% of the water withdrawn, industry 5%, tourism 2%, and the rest 13% for drinking and domestic use, according to the Tunisia Agriculture Ministry. Cybersecurity has continued to remain top of mind and should be a priority for anyone who uses the internet. As developers continue to come up with leading edge ways to counteract cyber attacks, hackers are getting smarter when breaking into IT systems. To protect your information online, here are a few cybersecurity tips. Avoid suspicious websites, pop ups, and emails. Pop-ups are quite common on the internet, but you must avoid clicking or opening them so you don't fall prey to phishing attacks. Only use sites with web addresses beginning with HTTPS and not HTTP. The extra S in these addresses stands for secure, and if you want to shop online, use familiar payment methods or your credit or debit card if you know the site is safe. Don't share confidential information. Never share your passwords or confidential information with anyone. Simple details like your date of birth can be used to guess your password and break into your data. So to be cyber safe, share only to your comfort level. Anytime you feel uncertain about giving someone details, verify their credentials before moving forward. Create strong passwords. Your passwords are like a gateway to your digital identity, so you need to guard them properly by following basic password hygiene, like setting up unique passwords for all of your accounts. That way, if one account is hacked, the others are still secure. Changing your passwords at least every three months. Enable two-factor authentication and using a combination of random letters, symbols or paraphrases among others. Also, avoid sharing your passwords or making them visible to others. Use antivirus software and keep it updated. Antivirus software is your computer's built-in security system. It will defend your device against scams, viruses and phishing attempts. Whether it's your smartphone or work laptop, keep them updated. Update your internet browser. Internet browsers release regular updates to prevent cybersecurity threats. Similar to your computer's antivirus software, update your internet browser anytime you are prompted. Then, your information will be safer when you access websites. The creator economy is evolving rapidly and is estimated to be worth about $100 billion globally. But Africa seems to be playing catch up in the conversations that shape the ecosystem. Talks about monetizing and standardizing the business for creators seem to be getting louder. And so to gain more insight about the state in Africa, I speak to Douglas Kenderson, who is the CEO of Seller. With the creator economy, 
you typically are t- you're typically talking about like creators here or users here that get to monetize their knowledge or audience. So in this case, when you say monetizing your knowledge, you have people that package products into like eBooks, courses, trainings, events. And then when it comes to like um, audience, you have people that monetize their audience for um, advertisements in this case. And I think the is doing very well in this, um, in this, in this economy, because we have so many Africans that are very enterprising. And today on our platform seller, we have over 60,000 creators and advertisement for different kind of creators that monetize by ads is just really growing. I mean, while we're not as big as the Western community, I think we are still just a very budding, we have a very budding creator space right now. Now, there have been growing conversations about this ecosystem, you know, extensive talks about monetizing and standardizing it. But some would argue that these talks are louder in some regions than others, and Africa isn't exactly part of this. Do you agree? Um, I think when it comes to like the ratio of how much monetization goes on, um, Africa maybe is on, the, is on the lower end of the spectrum. But I think we are really just pushing. I think a big part of monetization for any kind of industry has to do with payments today. And in as much as we have so many payment companies out there, um, there's still just not very great payments out, um, in the whole of the continent. But that's something that is being worked on. Because in 2016, when most of the payment companies like Paystack and Flutterwave came up, um, payments was really a mess. Not a lot of people could pay. And now from 2016 to 2022, payments are sort of really, really increased. And that has improved the way people can monetize their businesses, meaning people can pay them from out of the country, people can pay them in the country. And that sort of really made a big dance in this industry, as we say today. And what are the challenges of being a creator in Africa? When it comes to challenges, I mean, there are lots. I mean, I don't know if we want to say light. Okay, or let's just leave that away. Let's leave that away. Um, but I think one of the biggest things for a lot of creators in Africa is maybe getting paid, which is something that we try to solve with our product. But like, even at that, I'll give you an example. For something like, for something like fraud prevention, there's still the embargo on like how people view Nigerians like creating products. Like I feel like most of the time you as a great creator, you create a great product, you have a great brand and people want to pay you and they're like, oh, you're Nigerian and that fraud embargo is there. And even sometimes when people try to pay you, they encounter issues. And that's a very big issue because you've done the work, you've really done a great job in putting something good and then oops, you just can't get paid, or oops, someone is just doubting your confidence um, because you're Nigerian. But I think this is something that we are really re- redefining as the years go by. I think our reputation is just getting better, and I think it will only just get better. I think there are more challenges, but I think that's a very strong challenge that really stands out, even like fraud, and fraud in Africa is still a very big issue. And hopefully, as more payment gateways work to engineer better solutions, this will be better for everybody. And how easy is it for African creators to monetize their content? Very easy, actually. So we've sort of made it very easy for, so in less than five minutes, someone can create a profile and then sell their products um, in less than five minutes. You can sell an ebook, you can sell a course. And even something as simple as advertisement, and I'm just speaking to the social media end of it, where like maybe a creator is creating content on social media, they have a big audience and they're trying to monetize and that really goes with like ads. And in that way, um, it's not that easy, it's not that hard. Um, the good thing is everybody can get paid right now. The good thing is if you set up a, you can set up a store to sell your digital products or physical products online today with seller in less than five minutes. So not too hard, Um, but there's still a lot of work to do, especially just selling locally and also selling internationally across the spectrum. There are certain beliefs that the creator economy could be seamless with the power of crypto. What do you think? That's a very tricky one. It's a very tricky one. So I, I I think there's a very big opportunity for crypto. I think over the last couple of years, we've seen how crypto has changed the game for traditional banking system. I think there's, I think there's definitely a room because it's, it's a lot faster. It's depending on the depending on the cryptocurrency, it is volatile, but it's a lot faster and it really 
And there, there's so many opportunities, especially like in Web3 for creators everywhere. And what do we need to do to open up Africa's creator economy? And, you know, make it easier for people to invest in the creators that they love. When it comes to investing for creators that they love, um, we're thinking um, more access to infrastructure is probably the best thing. Um, I speak to a lot of creators today in Nigeria, and even though this sounds very simple, issues such as light as internet affect them because everybody works online today. Everybody's work is online today. And if something has infrastructure, like infrastructure like light power and internet is still a challenge, more creators cannot create. Um, we're complaining about the dollar system now. A lot of creators today, um, the dollar FX rates today, and a lot of creators today buy ads to promote their products to a bigger audience. A lot of creators today buy um, devices to make better content. And when things like this are here, it, we can't actually expand, we can't go further, we can't move forward. And I think these are the things, these are the infrastructural things that hopefully if we can fix as a country, it would really go far for us. Some people believe that creators would also play a key role in the metaverse. Is that what you think as well? Oh, yeah. I mean, the metaverse is all about, um, it's all about a different digital world for um, people to experience as outside the physical. And I think, of course, like people are going to create games, people are going to create content that people are going to be entertained by, people are going to consume. And I think, of course, creators need to create, creators need to exist, creators need to keep doing what they're doing. And it will play a big role. I just hope that Nigerians won't be left behind because of maybe how much access that we have because of how much internet and all of that. Again, these things seem very small, but it play a very big role at the end of the day. And do you think there are other things or other roles that digital platforms need to play to make things easier in the ecosystem? Um, yes. Um, I think one of the biggest things right now that we've seen is a lot of Nigerians selling to like um, other Africans. A lot of products that people create in Africa are just very um, universal in that way. I think in more, even with more platforms, as more platforms support more easy payments across the world, I think that would definitely help push the agenda. That would definitely help create like income and also just create ethics because when people, when creators, creators are really doing a great job today. I think at Seller we've done maybe over, creators on Seller have sold over 2 billion of digital products, 2 billion naira worth of digital products. And imagine if, imagine all the payments that actually maybe went through and didn't fail, that would be almost triple that amount. And that's how much we can bring in FX to the country. Yeah. Thank you so much, Douglas, for sharing your thoughts on the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Olaimi. It's a pleasure. And it's a wrap on the show this week. Thank you for staying with us. Remember, if you are interested in keeping track of how tech-savvy innovators are crafting homegrown solutions using technology in the country, keep watching Tech Trends because we will continue to showcase them for you. From startups to big techs and, of course, inventful thinkers. If you missed any part of the show, you can always catch up on social media on the channel's TV YouTube account. For Tech Trends, I'm Olayemi Udunuga. See you next time.